this morning we have a privilege and honor to have Pastor Bruce with us. And uh, uh, part of our mission month is to interviewing, you know, uh, missionaries and or, or people in the church and, and um, seeking for opportunities and how to serve the Lord better and how to bless the communities around us. Uh, so, and um, well, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Bruce, to be thank with you. us. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. I have a couple of questions uh, for you this morning. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about who Bruce Lyman is? Okay. Um, I'm married for 38 years to my wife, Jean. We have three great children, and my two sons each have two Grandchildren, I got four grandchildren, and my daughter's getting married in January. So I'm very excited how God has blessed our family. Um, I've been a pastor since 87, so coming up on close to 40 years there, and, but have never had so much fun as what ESL is, much more than anything I've ever done in my life. Wow, that's incredible. And Pastor Bruce, how did you get involved with the ESL ministry? Well, um, I felt God called us out to Akron, Ohio for ministry about 20 years ago, and the church plant failed. I said, what do I do now? And, but God used that to get me in a place where there was huge diversity. I'd grown up in white churches my whole life, and here in um, Akron, there were, we had 62 different countries part of our ESO ministry, and I've never had the pleasure and joy of meeting so many people from all over the world. And that's how we got into ESL. My wife wanted to do something, and she went to a ministry, and I got jealous um, and started uh, being a part of that, and we started at her church. So that was kind of a really blessing of a travel to get there. To... I finally realized that what I was supposed to do when I grew up at 58. So, and I know. So uh, how could you best describe what the ESL ministry is? Sure. Well, first, ESL, we use ESL because it's the most readily understood and acknowledged. When you come to the country, you look ESL. Because there's ELL, EFL, ENL, EAL, MLL, and ESO, and ESP. I don't even know what that one means. But there's all these different things. Um, but really, what ESL is all about is allowing a place for people that don't understand English to feel safe to make mistakes as they learn. It's a place where we have a chance to interact with their cultures and learn about their lives, as learn about our culture. And most importantly, it's a place where we can share our testimonies and share our lives and share Jesus in a way that is so helpful to them because they're looking for English, they're looking for American friends, and they're going to churches to find them. Even Muslims aren't getting help from the mosques oftentimes, and they come to Christian churches, and they find this Jesus, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Wow. And speaking of opportunities, uh, what are some of the opportunities that the ESL ministry brings to the church in terms of outreach? Well, first off, how many speak English here? Okay, I see some hands. You all can teach English. It's that easy. But it's an opportunity to teach in the classroom. There's opportunities for people to come and do snacks and interact with the students if they can't come all the time. Do tutoring for the students. And that, when you do child care for a, for a student, they'll listen to their child screaming because they want ESL. They want to learn English. And they trust the people that are taking care of their kids. Lots of different ways you end up helping them out in mercy ministries. They need, may need clothing. They may need housing. Refugees get that from the government. Other uh, uh, immigrants don't. The Ukrainians are not, uh, Im they're not refugees. They're immigrants, and they don't get those kind of benefits. So we have a chance to serve there. They have a doctor's appointment. Go in with them to the doctor because they have no idea what he's saying. As slow as he may speak, which they won't, <laughs> They have no idea. Helping them go to the grocery store. What is asparagus? How do you cook that thing? <laughs> and it's a lot of a learning both ways. But there's so many ways that people can be involved in bringing people to the point of salvation. Amen. Amen. 
So there is any advice you can give to the church uh, to run a great uh, ESL ministry? Um, I was talking to Debbie earlier and said you're thinking about doing a morning. One of the most effective ways to do English is have a morning uh, classes with childcare. There are so many young moms coming to America without grandma, mom, everybody else having babies in a strange land where they don't speak your English. I cannot comprehend being in a hospital like that. But that's a wonderful way to do that. Just praying for the body, praying for those that are teaching. Um, I know prayer is important here in this church. So just coming alongside people in prayer um, I used, and playing with the kids. I used to have a two-year-old Japanese boys club. We have a lot of Japanese students in Akron. And the two-year-olds that came in because of morning classes, I just began a friendship with, and they were running around me, and the moms knew that our church loved them because we ministered to their kids. So those are just a couple of things. Um, it's a chance to serve people in the community that nobody, nobody's looking out for. And you have a chance to interact with them and see how can we find people that need English and need Jesus. But it's a great way to serve and to love them as Jesus loved. He did things with people. He was involved in people's lives. And this is a great way to be involved.